Hey everyone, it's Dr. Rick, and I'm continuing with my series on microbiota, the gut, and health. But I wanted to interject a cannabis video here. I've been seeing a lot of patients online for cannabis certifications. And if you're interested, listen to the video and then maybe sign up with me. I'll put a link down below. Otherwise, be careful about who you go to with regards to advice on how to use medical cannabis. I think that there's enough recreational people that are buying up stock and inventory but there's not enough of us medical patients that are demanding products to be always available. Fibromyalgia, irritable bowel syndrome, chronic fatigue, cancer, anything with arthritis. If you look at it, there's not much as far as CBD dominant products. I'll talk about that after I describe the basics of what you should know when contemplating using medical cannabis. Cannabis so. plant is not just Cheech and Chong smoking weed and having big fat Bob Marley joints. The plant's popularity is divided into CBD concepts and THC concepts. Those two are just two of the cannabinoids you'll find in your medical marijuana plant. There's about 140 or so. The other ones are not as popular. The CBD industry boomed when President Trump made it legal to grow hemp. Hemp is a cousin of cannabis and prior to the Farm Act, it was illegal to sell hemp. I remember a story of a lady that brought hemp down to Florida, Disney World, and she was kept at the gate and brought in for interrogation, supposedly, because she had an illegal substance. It was CBD, but it was hemp. I don't think anything happened of it, aside from grandma getting stressed out and probably post-traumatic stress disorder for being somewhat detained. There's, there's a lot of finesse here. There's a lot of science now. Unfortunately, the science is really coming from other countries because the schedule rating for marijuana is still illegal. No medicinal use and it's addictive. And that's just so false. That's why we have to rely on Canada, Israel, the UK to come up with peer-reviewed data to prove that this plant and its constituents can work for medical disease. Once the Fed gets it off of Schedule 1, then a lot of universities that are state-run or funded will dive into the research and you'll see a lot of papers cooking. So next election, use your voting rights to get it off of the Schedule 1. This is my schematic on cannabis. It's divided into two basic products, CBD and THC. Now there are a whole bunch of other products, like I mentioned, cannabinoids can range from 140 to 142, I believe. But the other cannabinoids outside of CBD and THC aren't as popular. But when the research starts to pour out, once we get off Schedule 1, you'll be able to see how different components of the plant can be used for individual medical diseases and symptoms. You'll hear words like recreational and medicinal. Medicinal is using any part of this plant, whether it's the leaf, the extract, the tincture, the candies, the topicals, all of that is available to medical patients. It's also available to recreational patients. Most people that are using it for recreational will either use the inhalation products, which is usually smoke, burning the leaves, vaping, heating up the oil, sometimes waxes where you heat up the wax that's solidified, or edibles. So there's pretty much three different groups. There's the inhalation, there's the edibles that get into the digestive system and it get absorbed that way, and then there's topicals. I don't like smoking. I think it's uh, not as bad as cigarettes, but it does irritate the lining of the lung. And for those patients who survived COVID, their lungs are already twitchy now. They'll probably get better soon, I hope. But I would avoid the smoke unless you have something called a volcano. That's a little product from Germany, stainless steel. It essentially vaporizes everything and turns it into fine particulate inhalation matter. And then that usually is so pure that it doesn't give you the irritation that you get when you smoke the leaf or burn the leaf. You can get that in a regular vape cartridge that's sold as medical cannabis. I think vapes for all intents and purposes are safer than smoking the leaf or the flower. Those units called the volcanoes that come from Germany are about $300 each. So it's usually a price point that most people can't afford, but it's kind of cool because you put your leaf in there, it vaporizes it into this big plastic bag and you take the plastic bag off and you suck in the matter in the plastic bag to give you the reactions you want. But remember, here's the thing. You're taking the entire leaf which is usually going to give you a high, and that's okay. PTSD or anxiety, I think it's important to have a fast-reacting substance that'll calm you down. Not all of us are looking to get relaxed. Many of us are trying to take care of the inflammation that we have, either in our trigger points, in our belly, in our joints, or in the cancer that we're fighting. I have some patients that are actually on chemotherapy, and the medicines for nausea and vomiting don't work, so they've gone into the use 
So what happens is you have cultivators or farmers in the state of Illinois that make product and the product is processed or packaged and sent to the dispensaries. The dispensaries usually have some kind of deal with the cultivators. And remember, this is a plant and plants can have disease. They can have fungus, they can have bacteria, they can have mold. Because it's a federally regulated product, the FDA can actually come in to the cultivators and ask for a batch analysis, meaning that when the cultivators come up with batches for a season or a few months, they'll grow the plant in a very controlled environment, humidity included. When a farmer takes a batch, they start processing it and they make product. And you're supposed to be able to test the product so that you know its purity and you know it doesn't have any of those adulterants. And you have to store that data so when the FDA comes in to scrutinize your batches from the last year, the cultivators have to show them the test results. If they can't prove the tested results, again, they get fined. And the fine from the FDA can be money or can be shutting down the farm. So it doesn't always happen, but just that threat will keep most cultivators on the up and up. With regards to hemp, they don't have the scrutiny that the cultivators for medical cannabis have. And that's why I think you can sometimes have some hemp products that are questionable. If you're going to take a hemp product, I like Charlotte's Web. They're the originators of the push to get the CBD from hemp legalized. You should look up the story of Charlotte and her seizures and how this all evolved and eventually became legal. I wouldn't think in my time that I would see this happen, but it's so cool to be a witness to this. Regardless, when a cultivator processes this plant to the exact constituents that you want to give to a patient or sell in the dispensary, in general, CBD is great for inflammation, immunity. THC is good because of its psychoactive effect for relaxing. CBN can be used to quiet down the brain and help with sleep. THCA can be used to take care of nausea, like that chemotherapy patient of mine. So it's nice when you can process it down to these constituents and not worry about getting high because some patients just don't need that. I liken this to making several different types of medicines for several different types of medical problems from one plant source. Now you're gonna hear about sativa and indica and hybrids. That's a helpful categorization for the type of subspecies the plant came from. Sativa comes from a harsh condition. It's a survivor, it's a tough plant compared to the indica plant, which is grown in calm and peaceful weather. The hybrids are essentially scientists that have taken a little bit of the sativas, a little bit of the indicas, and uh, added a terpene or two and come up with something different. That's why I call Frankensteining. When you can break this plant down into its basic constituents and then reverse engineer those constituents into a pill, a tablet, a cream, or a liquid like an oil, then you can have exactly what you want for the ailment that you have. I predict eventually you're going to be able to go to a cultivator and ask, I need something for headaches and I want this, this, and this. And uh, this is the percentage and this is the flavor and I want it delivered through the gut, through the skin, or through the lungs. But we have a long ways to go, again, because it's still Schedule 1. There are medical cannabis companies like 1906. They can actually combine the products after boiling down and processing the plant. They use terpenes from other plants to intensify the result and give you several different effects from one type of plant. It's also been documented when you combine a product with a terpene or a probiotic or an omega-3 oil, it will actually intensify the results that you're looking for. As I mentioned to you earlier, there's data outside the U.S., that has showed the benefits of cannabinoids in several disease processes. This is just one that talked about the use of cannabinoids to decrease mucosal injury or inflammation to the lining of the gut. That's why I wanted to talk about it during my gut series is there are benefits to using the plant and accentuating the healing process in the gut. Whether it's small intestinal bacterial overgrowth or mast cell activation or IBS or Crohn's disease, I think we can use this wisely has one of your conservative measures before going to the big prescription medicines or surgeries. So there's a great future that's involved with this plant, but you have to get it off schedule one. So please use your voting rights coming up. If this sounds interesting to you, especially if you have a medical disease taking over your life and you're on multiple different medicines and still suffering, then maybe you wanna try this, but you'll have to have guidance. I love my bud tenders. Those are the salespeople at the dispensaries. They're not supposed to give up medical advice and they do have some knowledge about the plant itself, but it's it's usually anecdote. I use data. If you're going to use this medicine properly, then you have to have a coach that sifts through the data and has actually tested out the products because I do unboxings all the time. I have a playlist of cannabis videos that I've put out. So check out the link down below and see if anything pertains to you. If you're interested even further, there are benefits to having medical cannabis certification. One, you don't get taxed as much. It's about 1% tax. That's supposed to be the maximum that you get for any kind of medicines that you use. 
versus recreational where you have to pay up to 25% per product. Even if you go to a medical cannabis dispensary that's only recreational or rec, you can still get a discount because they want your business. So if you show them your card, Number one, you get ahead of everybody. That doesn't matter if it's a medical dispensary or a rec dispensary, but you get ahead of everybody else in line. Number two, if you do like to take advantage of the inhalation products, you can get a higher percentage of THC compared to what the recreational folks can get. Number three, you prove that you are a medical cannabis patient in case something ever happens to you at work or while driving, if somebody tests your pee and it's found that you have THC, you can be rest assured that your doctor has said it's a medical necessity to use this plant and to buy and purchase the plant. If you're interested, the process is to go to my website, check out the link for cannabis certifications, and then follow the prompts. My position on this is not only to certify you, but also to walk you through this. So if you use a product and it doesn't work, I help you find another product. And it's not just to certify you, it's also to shortcut and save you money. The idea would be if you go to the dispensary and you just buy a product because it's on sale and you don't like it, you just wasted 20 to 50 bucks. So the office fee is $100 to get you certified and to keep your records for three years. And then the state charge is 50, 75, and 125 for one, two, or three years of certification. And you get a little plastic card, almost like a driver's license that says you are a medical cannabis patient. When this became legal in Illinois, I had several patients that were older that had to be taken to the emergency room because they kind of overdosed. And overdosing isn't like with opioids or alcohol. It's just that you really feel way too high. And if you're older and you have medical disease, balance, high blood pressure, dizziness already, and you have the side effects of being a little bit too high, that's not cool. This never will stop your respirations like narcotics will. There has been no documented deaths specifically for medical cannabis. If you're a patient of mine or you're a medical patient and you're just testing the product out, what I would do would be to pick a product that got high CBD, loading up and doing it twice a day, every day for about 30 days. I think the CBD products, because they don't give you a psychoactive effect, you won't get high. It's going to take some time before you feel the effects of better range of motion, less trapezius spasm, better gut health, because it just is very, very slow. Some people will take one tablet of CBD and say, I didn't feel anything, and you can't do it like that. The reason I'm telling this story is these are all the products I had from a couple of years ago all wasted because I didn't like the effects. And that's a lot of money. So before I conclude this video, I wanted to show you a couple of the products that I do like. Dr. Solomon's Tincture, high in CBD. This one was my favorite, Grassroots, but they don't make it anymore because, I don't know, I, I heard it was because nobody was buying it and it was too expensive to process for the group. This is the cream of the crop and really expensive. Mary Medicinal's Tincture, and it's the highest concentration that's available in Illinois it's 125 bucks, it's not affordable. Luckily for me, I was going through my samples and I realized I had a full bottle of this, so I'm gonna hit this. Tangerine CBD Dominant Matter, it's a tincture as well, and tinctures are essentially oil products that you put under the tongue, hopefully get absorbed because of the mucosa under the tongue goes straight to the brain. And it does work to decrease inflammation, but the absorption's pretty quick. This is a Vexia Relief, this has been around for a long time, and it's 14 to one, meaning 14 of CBD to one of THC. When you do that Frankenstein reverse engineering, you can never take all of the THC out of the product, but you can dumb it down so that there's no psychoactive effect. Even if it's a one to one, the CBD will modulate the effects of the THC. So it'll be a smoother psychoactive effect and it might last longer. That's why I try to find products that are very high in CBD and very low in THC. Because you can take it twice a day. It's not psychoactive, so it doesn't affect coordination or dexterity. It just decreases inflammation and helps your immune system boost. This is Chill. These are tablets that are available now. All the other ones I just showed you are not available except for the Avexa Relief. It's really hard to find these things. And that's why it's so frustrating. As a medical patient, I want my products available. So what I had to do lately, unfortunately for my medical patients, because I'm probably taking your product away from you, I'd had to find a dispensary with the product I'm looking for, even if it's an hour away. I'll go there, buy up everything I can afford for the time, and then bring it home and just have a stockpile. And that's a shame that I have to do that, but I can never find it. If I use it for a fibromyalgia and I don't have a week to three weeks of the medicine, my fibromyalgia flares up and I have to revert to prescription medicines. I don't like prescription medicines. This is a new product from PTS that I'll probably do an unboxing on. It has high CBD, but it only has 10 pills in here and it's a little expensive. And I have done a video on this. This is a sublingual spray, comes out as an oil, and it works to, again, get delivery fast under the tongue. After you squirt it on the tongue and you hold it, 
and let the absorption happen for about three to five minutes. You can swallow everything and then it gets to the stomach and gets more absorbed. But depending on if you're a constipated patient or a diarrhea patient or you have irregularity, we're going to eat a big meal or have alcohol. There's going to be a change in absorption. There's so many variables with that kind of absorption that it's a little bit discouraging. So I try to get my patients to take it on an empty stomach. If you take it on an empty stomach and you do it twice a day and then you do that trial for 30 days of the product just to see if the product's going to help you, that's a reasonable thing to decrease all the variables that might screw up the absorption. And that is pretty much it. So hopefully you'll like this video. If it gave you some good information, give it a thumbs up. It helps the algorithm for YouTube and I can produce more videos. If you have any products that you like, then please put them in the comment section down below. If you're also a little bit perturbed because you don't have any products in your dispensary, I have done a video on how to use the online inventory check to see if your dispensary has what you want. And don't be shy. If you have a medical cannabis certification card, tell the dispensary, can you get this for me? I'm looking for this. You can request it just like you get. So thanks for watching up to this point. Don't forget to subscribe if you like the videos that I do, and I'll see you at the next one.